Welcome to another edition of Journeys of Hope. Tonight we have with us a guest who has actually been on the cruise before and she's going to be presenting twice this time on the cruise. And tonight she's going to be talking to us a little bit about um, how to heal when you're grieving. Sharon Ellers, Sharon, talk us a little bit about what you would say to someone about how do you heal when you're grieving? Because a lot of people don't feel like they can heal when they're grieving. It feels overwhelming and insurmountable and something that typically we will never get over. And so I think one of the things that I'm here to tell people, and, and this will be part of the seminar, and that is that you can heal while you're grieving. Um, it's very important to understand that because that helps us to move through our grief and also helps us to look at ourselves holistically. And I think that's one of the important things. You know, thinking about our grief is very, very consuming. It makes us feel um, emotionally, physically, and spiritually drained. We don't feel like ourselves. We feel like we're in a parallel universe. I mean, it seems like we can barely wake up and get through the day. And so what I learned sort of the hard way after many years of fighting my grief is that if I just allow myself to move through it and I have some tools like the grief toolbox or Reiki or other tools that are out there to really help me that I can actually get through, I don't, I don't mean get through, but move through my grief in one piece. And that was one thing that I learned the hard way. And it took some experimentation and it took me actually going through a couple years of fighting it to really realize that, that I could do that. And so that's really what the course or the workshop is going to talk about are those tools that you can use um, physically, emotionally, and spiritually to help you move through your grief and get to the other side in one piece. It doesn't always take the sadness away. It doesn't um, necessarily help you to, we certainly don't want to forget our loved ones, but it, it really propels you in a way that you've got the stamina that you need to tackle your grief and to really allow it to soften over time, if that's the right word. Yeah, I think sometimes people have a challenge with that word heal. So um, talk to us a little bit about what you mean when you say heal and grief. Well, I think, you know, it goes back to what I was saying earlier, and that is, you know, um, we don't get over our loss. A loss is a part of us. We actually learn to live with it. And so my perspective on healing is really thinking about those things that we can do from a day-to-day -day perspective, no matter how small they are. It's not like going to the spa every day and, and reading all kinds of books on grief and, and you know, eating the vegan diets and whatever. Um, it's just small things that we can do because our brains really aren't functioning the way that they should be when we're grieving. It makes it very difficult for us to, like I said, get through the day. And so the tools are giving us the ability to just take small baby steps every day, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, till eventually we feel like we can uh, tolerate, I guess, our grief or that we can let it move through us and that we have the tools to be able to cope with it. And I think that's really an important fact. Um, distinguishing between, you know, grief as in recovery, grief as in getting over it, grief as in healing, um, and being able to deal with it on a daily basis because it really is an integral part of our life. Um, it's not something that, you know, we take 12 steps to get through and then we're done forever. It's something that's consistently going to be a part of our life as we move forward. And we're going to have to deal with losses of many different kinds, um, you know, as we grow um, and get old. And so for me, especially, I noticed that, that, you know, as I get older, a lot of things are changing in the loss, you know, loss world. I've got more friends who are losing spouses. I have friends who are losing parents. I'm losing friends. Um, I just lost a dear friend recently. And so if I don't have some sort of toolbox or some sort of tools that I can use that are specific to me, you know, it's going to be insurmountable and over, you know, overwhelming as the years go by. So healing from my perspective is using the, the small baby steps that you can find in the areas of physical, emotional, and spiritual 
um, techniques to help you get through um, any difficult time in your life um, and make it to the other side. I think that's the important part. Yeah, you said something early on. Um, that is, you said uh, you want to make sure that you want to be able to know you can heal. And I think that um, you know, that's an interesting concept. Um, talk a little bit more about what you mean by that. Um, know how you feel. Um, I think a lot of what we do is we tend to push our emotions down. It's not something that we typically talk about with people. In fact, when we get to a certain age, we're actually taught not to show our emotions as all, at all. Um, children are especially open-minded to how they're feeling at any given time in their lives. They can be crying one minute or laughing the next minute. And we find that we're told at some point, probably in grammar school, that there are certain things that are not, it's not appropriate to do, right? It's not appropriate to be sad. You know, if you're going to be sad, go in another room. Um, if you're going to cry, go in another room. And so all of a sudden we're told, wait, you know, we've got to keep our emotions in check. And as we get older, we push them further and further down because we're afraid that we'll be judged or analyzed or criticized. And so we tend to build those walls so that nobody can really tell how we're feeling. And so sad emotions, especially with grief, most people tend to just, I'll say, choke them down because they don't want to let anyone else know that they're actually feeling that depth of sadness. And I think part of the healing process as we move through our grief, both physically emotionally and definitely spiritually in feeling those emotions and showing those emotions. Um, it really allows us to let go and move through anything that we're feeling. And otherwise, you know, we tend to hold on to it. Our bodies hold on to it. We can end up with, um, you know, illnesses. I mean, I've met a lot of grievers who immediately following the death of a loved one experience colds and, and physical ailments, um, lung problems, and that tends to be a center in our body where we tend to hold our grief, which is close to our heart, right? And so it's not unusual for people who have lost a loved one who hold on to their emotions to start feeling. In fact, I had a client who ended up, I think, two weeks after her sister died in the hospital with pneumonia. And when you think about it, the whole chest area, lung area is one of those centers in our body where if we hold on to our emotions, we, they can become blocked and we can end up with physical diseases. So the more we hold on to stuff, the less likely we are to have the stamina that we need to deal with those emotions. And so feeling them, allowing them to move through you, talking about them, sharing them with other people um, in a safe space. It might not be with your family. It may be, you know, in a support group or in an online support group is very important. And we talk about that in the seminar. Um, we talk a lot about, you know, those little things that you can do to start to feel the emotions. I know for me, I felt like I hadn't cried. I, I don't even know when I cried. And one of the things that helped was I watched a really sad movie. One of those movies that just gets you like Old Yeller or, or something because I needed to open those floodgates. And it doesn't sound like a very big thing. I didn't go to a therapist. I didn't, you know, go do um, shock treatments or something. But I watched a sad movie and I noticed that as soon as I got through that, the floodgate, it just gave me an opportunity to open the floodgates and allow those emotions to come out. And so without feeling them, we don't heal, we don't move forward in our grief. So I think that's a very important point. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and I think it's also, I guess, um, kind of to summarize what I was kind of hearing you say is that mindfulness in grief, being aware of who we are. You know, you said it took a long time for you to cry. I'm a crier, I cry it all the time. And sometimes then I actually needed to have escapes where I could just laugh or feel joy or be in another place. And I think it is about that mindfulness. And um, talk a little bit more about how you kind of help people come to understand what it is for them versus, you know, a, maybe a, is there's not one generic formula that works for everyone kind of thing. Well, I think it takes a little bit of experimentation and part of it is knowing what's out there. I was talking to somebody the other day who was experiencing grief and I was bringing up some of the resources are, that are available. And I think because grief is not often talked about, when you 
aren't grieving, you don't know that, you know, that maybe the grief toolbox is there, that there are other resources out there where you can go because you don't, you're not dealing with it. And so I found for myself, when my best friend died, I thought, oh my God, what do I do? Where do I go? And, you know, I started Googling. And so one of the things that we need to find out for ourselves is, first of all, what resources are available and then what works for us. Some people do very well in um, grief support groups. I took a grief support group. It was a wonderful experience for me. Other people would prefer to have something more on a one-on-one -on -one, uh, basis. Uh, some of the modalities that are out there, there's a gentleman that I've gone to his classes a couple times. He does yoga for grief. I mean, who would have thought you could take a grief yoga class? Um, and when I took it, it was very much focused on those that energy and that sadness that we hold on into the body and then releasing it through yoga positions, through chanting, through other things. I never would have even thought that that was something that was available. And when I tried it, it was such a transformative experience. I, I took it twice. So I think knowing what resources are out there, using things like the grief toolbox to find you know, what's available, going to seminars, um, reading online and seeing what is there and then being willing. And I think that's the biggest part. You have to take the actions to find out what's going to work for you. And so when you start experimenting, you'll say, ah, oh, no, that doesn't work. I'm, that doesn't make me feel comfortable. I really don't want to chant and I really don't, but I do really love art and there's grief classes related to art and there's also music i mean music to grief to is one of my he's one of my favorite people um, and he pulls together a playlist that talks about different kinds of music that's available to grievers not all of it is sad some of it is happy so again you have to experiment you have to be willing it's not going to come to you you have to make the effort and take the action to find those different things that are available and then build your own toolbox of um, activities that are going to work best for you so um, you mentioned grief yoga, but you actually have something called grief Reiki. I do, I do. Yes, grief Reiki was what I pulled together as part of my toolbox after I had gone through my grieving process with my best friend and then with my former fiance. I, I thought back because I was in such a daze and wondered how I actually made it through. And grief Reiki was what was born out of that. And that's what I'll be talking about at the seminar on the cruise. And that is using the Japanese healing modality of Reiki, which is a very gentle um, relaxation technique. It's one of many techniques that's out there. It's one of the ones that I gravitated to, to kind of look at yourself holistically and spiritually, emotionally, and physically, and kind of pull all of those pieces together. Because you can't just face your emotions and expect that you're going to get better. You can't just eat well when you're grieving, but not take care of your emotions or your spiritual components. Um, and the same is you can't just deal with the spiritual side of things and not take care of yourself emotionally and physically. So you really have to pull all those things together and that's what Grief Reiki does. And those are some of the things that we'll be talking about is those little tools and those baby steps that you can take to help yourself um, using different modalities physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and sort of bringing yourself kind of to that place where all the parts are working uh, in concert with each other so that you can keep moving through it because it's not easy to do um, without having the tools. Well, I am so excited that you'll be joining us on the cruise. And um, Thank you. if somebody wanted to reach you in the meantime, what's the best way for them to do that? The best way would probably be to go to my website. I have ways you can click on buttons and, and you can email me or you can call me. Um, the website is www and that's grief hyphen Reiki, R -E -I -K -I com. Well, thank you very much. We look forward to see you on the grief cruise. Thank you. It's a pleasure. I'm excited.